Good morning. Being the hour of 11 a.m., my name is Don Popolo. I'm your chairman today. We'll call the meeting to order. Um, the Committee of Adjustment meeting for June 8, 2022 will now come to order. A notice to all those in attendance is this meeting will be live streamed on YouTube and recorded. Please note recording will be linked to the municipal website following the meeting. The committee today consists of uh, Mr. David Bishop, Councillor Wal McKechnie, and Mr. Gerald Walker. Uh, this is a public hearing to consider seven applications for a minor variance to the municipality zoning bylaw. It is the committee's responsibility to consider all information received to date regarding the requested variances and to hear and consider any comments or questions provided by these applications. Any variances granted by the committee must meet four tests, which are very clearly defined in the Planning Act. Requested variances must be minor in nature, must be, must be desirable for the proper development of the land, comply with the general intent of the official plan, and comply with the general intent of the zoning bylaw. Please note if anyone wishes to be notified of the decision, please make a request in writing to the municipality. Are there any members of this committee who wish to declare a conflict of interest on any of the applications being presented? No. Because I will. <laughs> I'll be uh, exiting on the first application, which is um, the lands of Horton and Holmes, primarily because of uh, ownership in a property that is fairly close to that gentleman's property. So Mr. McKechnie will be taking over the the chairmanship for that particular application uh, while I leave the room. Um, I don't know. This, this meeting and future committee of adjustment meetings will be hosted by an electronic participation format. Any oral or written submissions received in advance of the meeting will be verbally read aloud at the time the application is considered. In, information regarding the live streaming of the meeting is available on the municipality of Dysart at our website. All persons who have pre-registered will have an opportunity to present or ask a question about the proposal. Please direct your questions and comments to the chair. Each person is, uh, each registered person will be allowed to, to have five minutes to provide comments or ask questions. Once, once finished speaking, the meeting host will mute their microphone. She will also do that if you're over the time because uh, with seven applications, we expect this to be a fairly long meeting. So first thing we have to deal with is the meetings, uh, the minutes of the meeting of May 11. I need a mover and a seconder for that to, to accept those. Moved by David Bishop except, and seconded by Walter McKechnie. Please in your, indicate uh, your acceptance of the motion by holding your hand up. Everybody's in, all in favor, carried. Okay, the first uh, application is um, Lands of Holmes and Horton. And uh, I have a, a conflict of, of interest with this particular application. So I will be exiting from the meeting and turn the meeting over to Mr. McKechnie to carry forward. Thank you, Don. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? Good morning, uh, Walter. Good. Uh, first uh, item of business is to appoint a chair for the file, for this file. So, uh, okay. Uh, seconded by Could have a seconder for that um, to appoint. Are you appointing me, Jerry? Oh yes, appointing Walter McKechnie for the chair, chairman for this particular file, Holmes. Great, thank you. And could I have a seconder, please? Uh, committee member Bishop has his hand up. Okay, great. Thank you, thank you, David. So. Um, now I'll read the resolution, be it resolved that Councillor McKechnie be appointed to the chair for uh, the, the lands of uh, Horton and Holmes. 
Can I have a show of hands, please, in favor? Thank you. Um, so the um, first application on the agenda is uh, for the lands of Holmes and Horton. Uh, if the applicant or the agent is in attendance, can the meeting host please add them to the meeting and unmute your mics, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, Councilor McKechnie, we'll bring them forward now. The uh, committee now has a, uh, an opportunity to uh, ask any questions of the applicant or staff. Uh, Mr. Chair, I might have one question here in that regard. Uh, we've been provided with a, uh, a survey uh, done, uh, Plan 19R6657, which is a plan of the uh, shore road allowance that is above water, well, both above and below high water mark. And it shows the location of this bunky that was the subject of an original a minor variance a few years ago, uh, allowing it to remain in place, uh, subject to it not being moved either closer or higher in elevation. And I think that that's what we went out to really inspect as to whether or not the changes to this particular shed um, uh, needed a minor variance from the restrictions that were placed on it previously. Uh, I think there was some confusion in the owner's mind as to where the exact location of high water mark was. And some of his measurements were taken from uh, a mistaken concept of what that high water mark was. Um, in my estimation of looking at the site, subject to what other persons um, views were, the actual change in elevation doesn't infringe that much more in regard to the previous minor variance that was granted. There were, however, some evident changes to the decking around it from what was there uh, in the previous application. This is the problem we get when something is changed without permit. So, but viewing at the whole thing, I do not see where this would be uh, an objectionable change to the nature of the building that was there in the previous process. And of course, I make myself subject to any comments to the inspection by Mr. Walker and yourself, Mr. Chair. Um, the frame shed that is referenced there is still too close to the high water mark. And there was a condition I see imposed by the, uh, by the staff that that frame shed should be moved to a distance to comply with the water setback. Um, based on my view of it and subject to the conditions as in, suggested by staff, I think that would be well within the rules for us to approve of this minor variance, Mr. Chair. And I would so make a motion to that effect. Any other questions, Mr. Walker, any staff? Um, so I think I'm on the same page as Mr. Bishop. Um, um, I, I agree with the uh, conditions um, that the shed would be moved, relocated out of the high water mark as, as recommended, and that we approve uh, the other um, variances with the bunky being the height and also of the um, carport being relocated at the rear behind Cascade Trail. So I would second Mr. Bishop's motion. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, are there any oral or written submissions with respect to this file? Uh, Jeff, is there any? Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, 
there were no uh, oral or written comments received, received as of the date of this report. Um, I just did, I wanted to clarify one thing for the committee because they are requesting three minor variances today as uh, committee member Walker alluded to. There is a variance request uh, for essentially four accessory buildings. Um, there is a variance request to raise the height of the private cabin. But, and there also is a request um, to permit the, the shed to be located within the water setback. So based on uh, the conversation, we have recommended against it and, and recommended a condition. But I, I did want to just clarify that because you do make, need to make a decision on that variance. Um, did uh, Mr. Holmes uh, want to comment at all? Yeah, I'm agreeable with moving the shed or I have no problem with that. Um, the only question I have is about the existing deck. Uh, I know it wasn't addressed, in, but as a previous um, previous owner extended it, I just wondered if there was any uh, problems with allowing that or is that? Uh, does anybody got any uh, problems with that, Jerry, Dave? Uh, it's difficult to deal with. It, it, it's hard to interpret what the intention of the original decision was. There was a deck there, but we do not know the exact width of the deck at that point in time. We also do not know where the steps came off of it at that time. Sometimes it looks like it came off to the rear of the building on the west, on the east side, and now there are steps coming down off of it on the west side. The survey by Mr. Wilson doesn't seem to indicate steps. I don't know what was there in the beginning, and it also doesn't tell us what the exact width of the deck was. It is apparent that there's been some addition to the deck, but I don't know when it went on, and I cannot say that it was before or after Mr. Wilson's survey. Mr. Walker, are you okay with that? Uh, yes, and as um, Mr. Isles has noted, um, I think in my interpretation here, we are approving um, the A variance and the C variance, and we are <clears throat> denying the B variance, which is to permit the accessory building the ship. So is that correct? So we're actually approving two of the variances and denying the one? That's correct. Okay. And are they just wanting it moved? Mm -hmm. Through you, Chair, if I may. Um, so I, there, there is a recommended condition that the, the deck be brought into compliance, the deck attached to the private cabin. So there's just been some discussion by the applicants and the committee on this. So staff requests some clarification whether that condition is to remain or, or to be removed. How does everybody feel in regard to the uh, shed? Do, do we want it uh, moved back so it's in, in compliance or Jerry? Well, I think, um, yes, that's regarding the shed, but um, I think we're questioning the deck. Um, okay. I don't have any uh, problem removing that condition. As Mr. Bishop mentioned, um, it's kind of unclear to make a, to know what to compare to. So, it's like leaving a sleeping dog lie, I think, and uh, remove that condition. Okay, that's fine then. Mr. Bishop? I would agree on that, Mr. Chair, subject to the condition that there be no further extensions of the deck <laughs> as it exists there today, okay? No, I uh, had no intention of doing anything to <laughs> Okay, then. Uh, um, would, would uh, Jeff, would you like to um, um, read the, the, the proposed conditions then, please? Sure, I can do that. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, condition one, these variances apply to the accessory buildings, private cabin, and shed as shown generally on the property sketch dated August 27th, 2021, and attached to the decision. Any encroachment beyond the variances granted herein will require a further application for a minor variance. Condition number two, the County of Halberton Shoreline Tree Preservation Bylaw applies 
The injuring or destruction of trees within 30 meters of the high water mark is not permitted. The exemptions noted in section three of that bylaw apply. Furthermore, an additional native shoreline uh, planting is encouraged to screen the buildings, naturalize the shoreline and, and to address any environmental concerns. Condition three, during construction, uh, proper site preparation and construction methods are to be used to prevent sedimentation of the adjacent lake, um, which means sediment fencing is to be installed down gradient of the construction site. <coughs> Excuse me. The site is to be properly stabilized immediately following construction to prevent erosion uh, and sedimentation. Condition number four, the applicants are to ob obtain a building permit for the carport. Uh, condition five, the applicants are to obtain a building permit for the foundation of the private cabin. Condition six, uh, the applicants are to remove or move the shed into compliance. Uh, condition seven, um, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicants must submit proof that the addition to the deck uh, to the, that's attached to the private cabin has been removed. Based on the discussion, I'm going to reword that um, to basically say that, uh, that uh, no further additions to that deck are permitted, something along that lines. I'm sure I'll, I'll find some better wording than that. Um, and the last condition is uh, the three accessory buildings plus one one-story uh, accessory building variants um, applies to the existing garage, carport, private cabin, and shed. So any future development beyond those uh, existing uses and dimensions granted herein will require a further variance um, through the committee. And that's it. Okay, thanks very much. So um, could I have a mover to approve those additions, please? I so move. Okay, now second. All right, second. Um, so uh, be it resolved that, uh, are you gonna read that out, Jeff, or am I gonna read the? Uh, yes, I'm happy to read those uh, resolutions for you. Um, okay. Thank so you. The, the first resolution, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is a variance to the provisions of section 5.2 to permit three accessory buildings plus a one one-story accessory building less than 10 square meters in area, as opposed to the permitted maximum of two plus one one-story building less than 10 squ uh, square meters in area. Um, and you can have a vote on that one. Could I have a mover for that one, please? And seconded by Dave, thank you. Moved by me, moved, seconded by Mr. Walker. Okay, and all in favor? Thank you. Uh, the second resolution is a variance to pr the provisions of section 5.2 to permit an accessory building, which is the shed, to have a minimum water setback of 10.66 meters, 35 feet, as opposed to the permitted 20 meters of 65.62 feet. Okay, could I have a mover, Jerry? Jerry uh, Walker. That is moved, moved as denied. I second. Okay, thank you. So, uh, all in favor? Thank uh, you. And the, thir the third uh, resolution, a variance to the provisions of section 3.19A7 to permit a legal non-complying private cabin height to be increased by 0 0.56 meters, 1.83 feet, as opposed to the permitted zero meters, zero feet for a total structure height of 5.5 meters. Okay, could I have Jerry Walker and moved by Jerry, seconded by Mr. Bishop? Correct. Uh, we have a show of hands, please. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Councillor McKechnie. Um, I will go and get Chairman Popple and return to the Thanks very much. Good luck yeah. to you, Mr. and Mrs. Holmes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a wonderful day. You too. You too. Chairman Popple will be with right with us.
Pardon? I turned it on. Yeah. Um, I'm back. Lonely out there. So still just Ivana and I in here. So the second case that we're going to deal with is uh, uh, Lands of Mills uh, in uh, Calgary Drive in Township of Havelock. Is there someone representing this particular case? Uh, Mr. Mills? Just myself. Would you give us a quick synopsis on, on your proposal and make some comments with respect to that, please? Sure. Uh, I'm looking at building a, a garage uh, with no storage above, just a standard height garage um, at the back of the property um, or the roadside. Um, and uh, the, so basically, we're, we're the, one of the issues, I guess, is the lot coverage because I don't own the shore lounge. Uh, the shoreline road allowance, um, my lot coverage is uh, up and around the 21%, I believe, with this garage, because we're currently at pretty close to the 15% where we sit just with the dwelling and the decks that are on there. Um, and then we also, there's a setback from Calgary Drive that requires seven and a half meters. Um, and speaking uh, with Jeff on this, um, we need it to be one meter back from there but our property line is quite a bit uh set back from calgary there's more than enough uh access uh there to get um to do access on calgary drive for maintenance um and i'm the one who looks after the maintenance i do have a, a contracting company based up in halliburton so i i maintain that road myself um for the other property owners also are there any questions with respect to this application from any of the committee members? Mr. Bishop? Mr. Chair, I'm just looking at the, the drawing that shows the proposed location of the garage that Mr. Mills was speaking of. Do I take it that this garage is measuring 38 feet in depth by 32 feet in width? Uh, no, it'd be the other way. It'd be 32 foot deep and 38 foot wide. It would be accessed from the side, uh, call it from the west side of the property, which is where the doors would go. But on this drawing that I'm seeing here that accompanies the plan, it looks like, just a minute, on the north-south direction, it is 38 feet, and on the east-west, it is 32 Correct. So, so the doors um, to enter the garage would be on the west side. There's quite a slope okay, on the I property. See, I so, saying there. I see what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So, what would happen if you, you know, I, I'm not trying to suggest anything here, but what, what, is there a need for this garage to be this size? Um, I, I guess it's to, to store um, my boat in there um, and some other things and put vehicles in there. I could, I, you know, I am, I'm open to making it somewhat smaller. I mean, I, I, I need something, um, you know, I could go to 30 foot deep, um, a little bit smaller. Um, I don't know how close that's going to get us to where we need to be, but I'm open to, for discussion on it as well. Well, let's discuss if we could, to Mr. Mills, to try and, you know, accommodate as much as possible because you're, you're going to be covering this parcel with a fair chunk of building. Mm -hmm. but Mr. Chair, I'm just wondering if, if he could reduce, if he could reduce the north-south distance to 30 feet and the east-west to 30 feet, we would be able to achieve then it looks like maybe a three meter setback at the rear and achieve a greater, about one and a half meters on the sideline. And I don't know where that would take him as far as the lot coverage is concerned and yet still give them the opportunity of having a, a fairly good sized garage. I, I, it's just a thought, Mr. Chair, and maybe Mr. Mills could speak to that. Um, I I'd be willing to, to do something like that. You know, I, I mean, obviously I've just got to be needy, neater and tidier inside it. Right. So, I, I mean, you're, <laughs> I will agree with you. It's a, it's a, 
that's why I guess I don't have a garage. <laughs> uh but I, i'd be willing to to uh, go along with that 30 by 30. so mr chair maybe jeff could tell us how much that would reduce his lot coverage by can you do that calculation jeff yes through you chair that would reduce the lot coverage percentage to 19.6 percent <clears throat> so just to be on the safe side it might be um Beneficial just to round that up to 20%. You'd be happy with that, Mr. Mills? Yeah, no, I could do that. Thank you. I, Mr. Could, Walker? Agree that. I could agree with that. That uh, sounds very fair. So, in that regard, we'd be able to meet different setbacks by reducing the, that uh, uh, footprint of the garage and and that we would still need a minor variance as to those setbacks of both on the rear and the side. Is that correct, uh, Mr. Isles? Well, he's requesting a one meter setback right now. If you were to reduce the dimension um, eight feet is what's being discussed, um, it would add eight feet to that if the building was exactly parallel to that lot line. So you'd be looking at roughly, uh, 11 feet of parallel, so three, three and a half meters. Um, I always like to err on the side of caution just to give the, the, the applicant some uh, flexibility. So something like three meters maybe, which is just under 10 feet. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that, Mr. Mills? Yeah, no, I can work with those. That's fine. Okay, Jeff, for the, uh, on the application and uh, we're, we're agreeing to lot coverage of 20%. What, what is the requirement for the um, uh, setback on the, on the rear lot line? Would be, it would be three meters. Sorry? It would be three meters. I'm, I'm, I, I can't catch that part, but all I wanna know is if I, if I have to change the, the uh, application on here, we're, he's asking for uh, a setback of 3.2 feet or one meter as opposed to required 7.5 meters. Well, if he thinks three, three meters. meters. Okay, three meters dead on? Three meters on yeah. the rear and then he's gonna reduce, he's, he would reduce his sideline uh, again to uh, one meter plus two feet. Um, yeah. I don't know. Well, if we so we're going to, we're going to uh, permit him to have a private garage with a little rear lot line setback of of one meter or three feet, correct? Not and a rear a lot no. coverage of twenty percent. No, correct. It would be a rear line setback of three meters. Well, three meters. Yes. Okay. And a side line setback of whatever one meter, two feet is. Which complies with the bylaw, just for clarification. But he complies with the bylaw, okay, on the sideline. It's, it's, yeah. it's, he's only asking for the rear line, line setback to have a variance. Yeah. That's fair, Mr. Chair. Okay, so uh, would someone uh, like to move that then? Before we proceed, Chair, if I may, um, I just, I, there's some conditions outlined on the decision. Um, and if I can read those out, just so that uh, the applicant has an uh, opportunity okay. to comment on them. Better he hears it now than after. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Agre Jeff. Agreed. So there's six proposed conditions. Um, the first condition uh, is these variances apply to a garage as shown generally on the property sketch dated April 22nd. Any encroachment beyond that, the variances granted today will require another minor variance. The second one relates to the County of Halbert and Shoreline Tree Preservation Bylaw. Basically, uh, the injuring of trees within the 30 meter high water mark is not permitted. Uh, number three, during construction, uh, proper site preparation uh, methods are to be used to prevent sediment sedimentation of the adjacent lake, um, which means to uh, install fencing, uh, sediment fencing, downgrading of the construction site. Condition number four, prior to the pouring of the footings, the applicant must submit confirmation from an Ontario land surveyor that the garage meets the granted rear lot line setback as granted today. 
Um, proposed condition number five, prior to the pouring of the footings, uh, the storage shed located within the minimum water setback is to be removed. And condition number six, prior to the pouring of the fo footings, um, the shoreline deck is to be removed or brought into compliance, which I believe the applicant agreed to. I just wanted to read them out for everybody. Okay, can I get a move and a second there on the, on the motion? Moved by Mr. Bishop. And seconded by, who held their hand up? Terry. Mr. Mr. McKechnie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I had it up where Jerry did. Okay. Moved and seconded that the committee's re decision with respect to file D13 MV2022001 be recorded as follows. The variance to permit a private grass to have a minimum rear lot line setback of three meters as opposed to require 7.5 meters is granted. Please indicate your support for that. And the variance permit maximum lot coverage to be 20% as opposed to require a minimum of 15%. Please indicate your support and that's carried as well. Um, thank you very much for your time, sir. And uh, thank you. Um, as long as you don't call us to help you build it, we'll be glad to carry on with this. <laughs> or tidy it up, right? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question, a question from Mr. Bishop. Yes, sir. Oh, I, I I don't want to speak to that. That's a we have granted a, a fairly substantial increase in the lot coverage, but that is, in my estimation, it was because of the nature of the lot and where this is being placed on the property. It is at the rear of the property, and uh, it is not offending the lake shore or the lake shore view. So that was one reason why. I would have been in favor of this greater increased coverage of the lot. Thank you very much. Great, I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mr. Mills, for your attendance at the meeting. Enjoy your building project. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next uh, case we're dealing with are the lands of Poirier. Um, and is Tim Peter, how does he pronounce his name? Poirier, but his agent is Jim P I T R E. Petri. Petra. Petri. Petri. Is he available? Uh, no. Who is? Yes, if we if you give us one moment, we'll bring the applicants forward. Oh, Syed. Okay, okay. Syed, are you there? The applicants and their agent are in attendance today, Chairman. Yeah, what do I do? Good morning. Sorry about that. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and the committee members. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yeah, we can hear it. Yeah. Sad, would you give us a quick synopsis on what your proposal is and what you're planning to uh, do on this particular project? My name is Sayyid Ahmed. I'm an agent, authorized agent for property address at 1092 Long Lake Road. And the proposal is for unheated sunroom addition to the back of the house. Um, only concern right now is the zoning by law about the minimum water set back to structure of 20 meter required. And we recently just submitted a revised drawing for 20.17 meter. And uh, we are hoping that that can be approved uh, today and uh, so we can go ahead with the project. And I'm pretty sure uh, John Party is also attending the meeting. If you have any question or further concern, definitely he'll be more than happy to explain the situation. Thank you. Well, part part of the problem is the the, the official plan states uh, the the reading of the official plan states that the uh, setbacks for water setbacks will be strictly adhered to. That's exactly how it reads in the plan. So I'll be interested in hearing what the committee members have to say about that. So we're open for discussion or questions to Mr. to Syed, gentlemen.
have no further question. Are you asking me, sir? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry, I probably didn't hear you correctly. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, please, can you repeat that question? I guess my question, my question to you would be, are there any alternatives where you, where you could conform to the setback on your property? Yes, we do. Which we said the revised drawing we have now is, uh, the proposed is 20.17 meter for the water setback. Well, Mr. Chair, I don't see what a drawing of that aspect in my file if the applicant has changed his design to meet the water setback, then why are we here? Yeah, why are we here? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Um, Mr. Isles? Yeah, if I, if I may, uh, th there was a variance requested um, at 57 feet for the proposed sunroom. Um, and that's what's indicated on the drawing provided. Um, as the committee members, if that's changed and the sunroom now complies with that 20 meter water setback, a variance would not be needed. That's correct. Do you care to comment on that, sir? Mr. Poirier is muted. Go ahead, Mr. Bishop. No, I was just saying that the applicant is muted. He was speaking, but here, here I am. Oh, here yeah. I am. Listen, uh, uh, Lifestyles uh, Sunrooms handled that uh, diagram, and there was a few errors made. The other day, my neighbor and I went uh, with his long uh, uh, measuring tape, and from the lake to the cottage is 23.8 meters, and from the lake to the shed, one of the sheds was 22. I'm willing to, to move a shed that was approved uh, when when the permit was built in in uh, 2001. Sorry, right. uh, when the cottage was built and approved, along with that shed, I might add, and it was after the uh, the bylaw. So I don't know who did that, but that's years ago. If I have to move a shed, I will move it. I've al I've already contacted a, a contract local contractor, Inspire Technical Services. He said he would give me a letter if I had to move the shed and he would move the shed for me. So I'm, I'm just willing, I'm just wanting to get this done. We're seniors, uh, we're moved up here permanently and uh, we appreciate any consideration you have. Mr. Bishop. Uh, Mr. Chair, if this gentleman is proposing his construction of this sunroom that will exactly meet or exceed the water setback, then this committee is not in any position to uh, impose a condition in that regard, neither as to removal of buildings or whatever. That's up to the building department in terms of his construction and his construction to meet the zoning bylaw. So I don't see where we are uh, seized of this particular matter if he's changing his design and his location to meet the water setback. Would you care to comment on that, John? Mr. Isles? My apologies, I, I was muted. Yes, through you, Chair. Uh, committee member Bishop's correct. So if the applicants are bringing uh, the development, being the proposed sunroom into compliance with the water setback, so if that's sunroom is going to be beyond the 20 meter water setback, then the variance today can be denied and there will be no conditions to remove any structures. That's right. Just, you may just, just, only just one any question then. On a variance that's denied. Where, where do we go from here then if we want the sunroom? If it complies with the building setback, you can just apply for a building permit. Okay, and that's directly with Dysart then? Yep. And, I, the building and I assume the contractor will, will do that because I've asked him to do that. Well, I, I get what you're saying because if he if he if he can conform to what's required, we can hardly tell him to do something else as well, right? I agree with you. Is that not right, Mr. Isles? 
That is correct. There's no conditions on a variance that's denied. So how do we deal with this uh, particular application then? Well, you can deny the requested variance given that it is going to comply with the zoning bylaw. Okay. Well, that's what we'll do then. So you're you're okay at 65.6 feet, Mr. Ursayat, right? Yes, we are. Right. Okay. So it be as resolved, the committee's decision with respect to file D13 MV 2022-005 be recorded as follows. A decrease provision of section 5.2 to permit a dwelling to have a minimum water setback of 17.64 meters or 57.9 feet, as opposed to required minimum of 20 meters or 65.62 feet is, is denied. Please indicate your support for the, Mr. McKechnie, where's, where's Mr. Walker? I'm here and I seconded, Mr. Chair. You, is he okay? Yes. He doesn't come up on the screen. Where is he? Through you, Chair, yes, it does we appear have, that we have. It is carried as it is anyway. Anyway, thank you very much for your consideration, gentlemen. If I may, Mr. Chair, uh, maybe Mr. Isles could confirm to Mr. Poirier, he should be very accurate as to where he places this in his distance from high watermark. And, and, and that will be conform to I what's agree. required. So that's what you got to do. Are, are, are we clear on that? And we're not going to deal with any problem with you with your shed or anything else. So your motion is defeated, but, but you're required to meet the setback that, that's required, which is 65.62 feet. Correct. Correct? We're good to go. Thank you very much for your attendance, sir. Thank uh, you. I need a motion. I need a, a mover and a seconder on that. I so move, Mr. Chair. Walter McCackney moved it. And a seconder is Mr. Bishop. All in favor? It's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Was denied. The next, uh, where is Glenn Evans? Is he, is he coming to talk? Can you, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm back. You're back. Okay. I nice don't know to have you went, back, Mr. Walker. There was a thing on my Last screen. guy who comes to, to the meeting usually has to buy the lunch. There was a thing come on my screen that the host moved me and I couldn't, I don't know where I went. <laughs> there you go. I know where you are now, so that's okay. Uh, They're called next, gremlins. They're called gremlins, Jerry. I don't know, <laughs> but hopefully next month we're back where we can look at one another. What Thank about you. Mr. Glenn Evans? Is he around anywhere? I think he set a new record on, on the number of variances required here. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi, everybody. Good morning, Glenn. How are you? Doing well. I'm Doing Teresa. Awesome. Glenn, uh, we, uh, we are on some time restrictions, so it'll take quite a while to read off the, number, the list of uh, <laughs> applications you've got. So you're not grabbing lunch. <laughs> maybe, maybe you could just uh, give us a quick synopsis of where we're going here. Uh, well, Bottom line is uh, basically the conditions of all of the variances that are that are in play here um, were basically adopted. So these are all conditions that are that are existing. I guess uh, the one uh, the one thing that I would say is is that the hot tub itself was was not part of the purchase. We we bought that after we bought the property, and the original uh, the original application when it was submitted in whenever it was. Uh, the shed, the the one of the one of the sheds that's furthest to the east, was actually on the other side of the driveway, and it was only maybe eight or ten feet off the water. And I had since moved it because obviously, uh, I, I mean, we're 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 pushing things just about as far as we can push them here, as far as asking for for uh, for a little bit of latitude. So anyway, 
Um, I would gladly entertain any questions that uh, members of the committee and, uh, has, and, and uh, hopefully we can move this thing forward. Well, my, my uh, humble opinion is that I doubt that the committee will give you much of a problem with respect to the main cottage, because there was a building permit approved and signed for that but I think we would like to come and see your property just so we know exactly what we're talking about with respect to the, to the event. So what we would like, what I'm suggesting is we defer that we defer a decision today based on a site visit and you showing us around what's there and we can see what we can work out. Mr. Walker. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, visiting Mr. and Mrs. Evans and we had a look at the whole project and, uh, so I guess I really don't have to visit the property again, but um, we did have a look at it. And um, if we're gonna defer it, that's fine. I won't make any comments. Fair enough. Hey, Mr. McKegney. And I also had the opportunity to look at the property. So um, I'll um, defer any comments I have also. Okay. So we in agreement we'll defer it and then the rest of us can get a look at what, what we're talking about. We in agreement on that? Mr. Bishop? I'm in agreement to go out and have a good look at this particular situation. Uh, I am, huh, I, I know where it's located, that's all I can say. Uh, but in terms well, I haven't of- I have been there, but Glenn didn't invite me, so. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, is it reasonable that we defer the application, we we'll defer the whole application uh, pending site visit, which we'll set up with uh, Glenn at some time in the next week or two. So it means that we won't make a decision until the next meeting, Glenn. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chair. Fair enough. Thank you. So we'll uh, make so a motion to that effect. Mr. Bishop, moved by. And the seconder, Mr. McKegney. Excuse me, if I may, just... Uh, uh, the motion... Sorry, I apologize, go ahead. Sorry, Glenn, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I just wanted to be uh, just... So so we're just going to push it till the July meeting, is that correct? What did he say? We're pushing to the July meeting. <laughs> uh, well, what are we into now? Yeah, it'll be in the July meeting. Okay. We, we'll, we'll, we'll visit between then and now, and then we'll deal with this at the July meeting. Sounds good. So that's moved and seconded that the committee's decision with respect to file D13 MV 2020-007 be recorded as follows, that the applications will be deferred pending a site visit uh, before the July 1st meeting, or July 8th or whatever the meeting is. Please indicate your support for that. Carried. Thank you very much. Sorry to take up your time, Glenn, but we're looking forward to coming to see your house. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's all good. We're looking forward to having you. Okay. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day, folks. So uh, I don't know when you, we'll, we'll get uh, we'll we'll set up a somebody will set up a, a a time when Glenn's around. So we'll we'll work on that before. It's got to happen before the July meeting. So basically, two of us has to go. You and I, Mr. Bishop, and uh, so we'll That's set fair. that up. And That's we'll fair. probably drag Jeff along with us. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. We'll, we'll be in touch, and we'll uh, also contact the applicants and arrange something. I'll, I'll take out a second mortgage so I can fill the gas tank. What did he say? I said, I, I'll I take a second it. mortgage so I can fill my gas tank. <laughs> well you guys let me know when you want to go bishop and i'll set that up with you uh, uh jeff okay fair enough uh the next case we're dealing with are the lands of ballon and uh is that correctly pronounced pronounce due to a circulation error uh we will not be dealing with this uh particular uh, candidate today, so we need a deferral uh, till the July meeting. If 
Uh, Correct. Um, the applicants are in attendance. Uh, Mr. Ballon is on screen today, but uh, as you mentioned, there was a, an error in the notice that was sent out. Um, and staff recommend that this file be deferred without discussion to allow for proper notice uh, to take place. Um, but the applicant is in attendance, uh, Mr. Chair, so perhaps uh, we could give him the opportunity to ask any questions if he has. Did you take that sheet from me, Jeff? No, the resolution should be there. I don't have it. No. Hmm? But, uh, if you can't locate it, Mr. Chair, I'd be happy to read out the resolution and you could you could ask for a vote. Well, I don't have the proper paperwork, but um, if uh, I've got Rose and Nottingham, the only ones I got left. Well, as I mentioned, I'd be happy to read out that resolution and we could take a vote and then staff could find that resolution and, and complete it after the fact. That's fair. Uh, sure. Can we have the, we pass the motion that uh, I need a mover and a seconder to defer that application by Walter McCackney. And Jerry Walker. Deferred. Um, Would you like uh, me to read that out, Mr. Chair? Bell on. Okay, go ahead, Jeff. Read it out. Uh, be it resolved that a decrease to the provisions of Section 5.2 to permit a private garage to have a minimum street setback of 10.4 meters, 34 feet, as opposed to the required 17.5 meters, 57.4 feet, be deferred. Deferred. That's carried. Please indicate your support of that. That's carried. Okay. And and that was uh, moved by Walt McKechnie and seconded by Gerald Walker, uh, Jeffrey. Thank you. The lands of Nottingham. Sounds like it should be a story. Is this, um, who is this gentleman? We will be bringing forward the applicants, uh, Alan and Denise Nottingham. So just please give us a moment. Tom and Teresa, no? Nope, we will be removing Tom and Teresa and bringing forward Mr. and Mrs. Nottingham. Um, just give staff one second and we'll complete that. Alana, can you bring the applicants forward, please? I'm just working on it. I'm having a little bit of a technical difficulty. We've got to get them raised up there. Hello, can you hear us? Yes. Ellen Nottingham, we see your name. Oh. All right, one second here. I'm not sure what uh, what changed. There oh. we are. Hi. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome here to with the my wife, adjustment. My wife, we thought maybe you start um, for a snooze. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Technical yeah. difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, first off, I'd like to say thanks to, to, to Jeff and Danielle Hicks at, uh, at the municipal municipality there uh, and all their patience and and helping us through this and uh, appreciate their professionalism and it's been uh, it's been really uh, fantastic dealing with them. Um, I guess uh, 
we're, we own lot 74 at uh, 1052 Michael Road, and uh, we're looking to, uh, to build a family cottage. Uh, we're a family of, of six, and um, we had looked at um, lot, lot 74. It's kind of an odd-shaped lot, and uh, the building envelope is, is kind of a funny shape, and, and we're appealing to see if we could get the... Uh, the one side kind of leveled off. So that would allow us to build the cottage a little bit wider uh, within the setback. It would be 26 feet wide. And, and if we were uh, given the easement, it would, it would allow us to build a little bit wider to the 33 foot. Um, and then on the opposite side, we were proposing that um, uh, a small variance so that we could uh, build, build a deck encroaching the, uh, the, the property next door. Um, so that's uh, that, that's kind of what we were looking for. I have to raise a question because it's probably going to come up. But uh, are there any alternatives available for you to so that you meet the required setback? That's one that we're concerned about as much as anything. Uh, well. The, the, the problem is with the lot being such a funny shape, um, the cottage just becomes, starts to become very, very narrow. And uh, it, it's just a challenge to, to try and, and, and put a layout together that, uh, that, that makes sense, I guess. Um, the, the variance on the lake side is, is really just a, it's kind of a, a, a small uh, sliver that joins I guess both the uh, the high points, as if you would, uh, and, and gives us just that little extra bit to to make the cottage uh, a, a pinch wider. Mm -hmm. Mr. Walker. Yes, um, I've had a had a good look at this, and um, um, he's the Nottinghams are kind of in a precarious situation here as they look at their lot line, or sorry, the water uh, shoreline have an in, the slight indentation there. Um, and also they're faced with having water on two sides of their building. Um, and I do know that we do look at our official plan regarding water and we've run into this before. Um, personally, you know, I know we don't like to have um, in infractions or um, imposing into the setback. But in this particular case, I don't have a real issue with it as the reason being is, um, you know, he's done very well at trying to uh, fit this cottage into his building envelope due to the setbacks. Um, I don't see where there's any infringement on uh, neighbors because it is on the water. Uh, it looks like a well-treated lot. And um, it, to me, it seems to be a minor, minor encroachment, um, mainly because of the indentation of the shoreline. Um, however, on the other hand, I do have a little more issue with the deck on the rear. Um, you know, that's probably something that could be omitted. I'm just uh, pointing that out, or it's a, strictly my opinion. But that's kind of my read on this particular application. I. I don't have an issue with the way he's, uh, they have designed that cottage with that little bit of a deck and um, trying to stay within that, that indentation on the lot. It just does make the design very difficult. That's my comment. Fair enough. Uh, Mr. Bishop? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just uh, appreciate what Mr. Walker has indicated in regard to the fact that the, the lot doesn't have an exact straight shoreline and that sh indentation, but within our official plan documentation and the requirements of setbacks from water, we have to, I don't know how we overcome the words strictly adhered to. Um, the nature of the lot from the photos that I've seen, uh, it's rather neat that it's very level. And um, the opportunity I think would be there uh, to maybe redesign what this cottage might be 
in order to meet the required setback from water. Um, the Nora Lake is, uh, it is a, it's in a sand shelf. Um, it's a great body of water. And that's an aspect of the flatness of the, of the uh, lot that's just shown here. So I think there's lots of ways you can design a cottage to accommodate a family of six and still meet the zoning requirements because I don't know how we overcome strictly adhered to. The other side of it is in regard to the encroachment of the sideline, which calls for 0%. And then again, as Mr. Walker has alluded to, that's quite an encroachment onto your neighbor and the distance of, of keeping buildings apart going down sidelines. So I really think that in this particular case, have a look at the opportunity of redesigning this cottage to accommodate their needs and to accommodate the, uh, the lot and its physicality. I, I think that, uh, has anybody else visited this property? I think that, I think that we should do a site visit and um, perhaps with, with this gentleman and his wife and, and see if there's something we can work out rather than rather than just draw a line in the sand, which is probably what, what should happen. But um, are you guys in agreement with that? It's fair. I, I'd Robert? like to say, yeah, um, I, I've looked at this too, the shape of the lot, and um, I'm kind of in, in uh, agreement with Mr. Walker in regard to, I'm not in favor of the back deck, but uh, the other part I am. So if that makes any difference, um, that, that's where I stand with this. But if you'd like to do a site visit, not a problem. Jerry? Mr. Walker? Oh, um, yes. I'm fine either Sorry, way. Sorry, you've already been there. So. Am I gone? No, nope, we I can see you, Jerry. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm fine. If you want to, uh, like I say, I my opinion is, is that I don't have a problem with the front, but I do have a problem with the back. But a site visit would uh, definitely clarify things, so uh, we can definitely do that. Well, somebody made a motion that we do that, Mr. Gerald Walker. Is there a seconder, Walter, Mr. McEckney? Mr. Nottingham. Mr. Nottingham, we're going to defer this particular um, application, which means that you don't have to do any more until we visit the property and we'll make a decision based on, on the, uh, we'd like you to be there if, if you can, if we can set up a time uh, which is appropriate for all of us to be there. And Certainly, see yeah. What, see what we can work out. Okay. Okay. So you, I'll, I'll leave it with Jeff to set something up and we're pretty flexible. Um, okay. And um, hopefully we can come to some reasonable solution. But uh, Fantastic. I, do, I do want you to understand that we don't make these bylaws, we just enforce them. So, That's but great, yeah. I think that if we have a, if, if we're there and we know exactly what we're talking about, then I think we're getting more fair decision. And uh, so, um, it's been moved and seconded that uh, both applications for, for Mr. Nottingham be deferred to the July meeting. And uh, please indicate your support to that uh, by holding your hand up. And that's, that's what it will be. I'll read this out so there's no confusion. It's to be able to resolve the committee's decision with respect to file D13 MV 2022-009 be recorded as follows. Decreased provision of section 5.2 to permit a dwelling to have a minimum water setback of 17.9 meters as opposed to required to have 20 meters. And a decreased provision of section 3.7 to permit a patch of deck to extend into the minimum interior sideline setback of 2.1 meters as opposed to required zero meters is also deferred. So we will be in touch and um, make sure we get there before the July meeting and uh, we'll deal with, hopefully we can work something out that will be uh, agreeable to both parties. Okay, fantastic, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much.
Okay. Where's the lands of rose? Sounds like it should be a song. Pardon? Hmm? Are they there? Mrs. Rose. Yes. Are you the applicant today? Yes, I am. Could you start this off with uh, just a quick synopsis of, of what your proposal uh, indicates? And I'm sure we'll have some questions from the committee. Sure, this is for stairs for our back deck. Um, within the minimum water setback for the allowable building area, we're looking for it to be stairs versus deck. Um, and I believe uh, one of the laws right now only allows stairs to be 1.5 meters and we're requesting stairs to be 6.5 to six meters. Uh, but isn't it, isn't it to do with the walkway that you have part as well? Uh, what? Maybe the walkway? I'm out there. The requested variance chair, if, if I may, is, is for stairs attached to a deck and the deck is attached to the dwelling. Right. So you have some questions, gentlemen? I'll read you out here exactly what we're looking for. It's an increased provision in section 3.1 to prevent a stairway within the minimum water setback of six feet to be 6.25 meters or 20.5 feet wide as opposed to the permitted maximum of 1.5 meters or 4.92 feet wide. Mr. Bishop? Yes, Mr. Chair. I'm just looking at the overall plan and looking down as to where this might uh, affect the program. So these stairs are, uh, if, if unfortunately, if this decking had have been thought about in terms of the original construction, it, it might have made the whole building come back sufficient amount to accommodate this. Um, we have a problem again in regard to water setback, Mr. Chair. Uh, and again, we are struggling with these words strictly adhered to. And I don't know how the applicant is pointing out how they can overcome those provisions of strictly adhered to. Uh, it would appear to me that a deck can be created across the front that would be narrower in size, not extend towards the water so far, and maybe not be as wide, and you could still put down stairs uh, within an area leading off of that deck. They would be narrower in terms of their width. Uh, and would not encroach from what I see the drawing into the uh, water setback. The other aspect that I have again is that this is on Lipsy Lake and Lipsy Lake is a relatively narrow body of water leading in a north south direction. And so views from the other side, views from the lake will make this encroachment into the water setback quite noticeable. It's unfortunate that it wasn't thought about at the time of original construction or design of the cottage. Um, the applicant will have to give me some planning principles upon which he can overcome the word strictly adhered to. Mr. Walker. So I just want a, a little bit of clarification here. Um, the re request for the variance is for the stairs to be wider. And that's the only request. Is that correct? That's what they're asking for. Yeah. Okay. So is the actual deck and stairs encroaching on this in the setback? Yes. Yes. Well, if they are, why aren't we asking? Why isn't there an application for that being in the setback? Like the, 
Can you put a deck and a stairs in the setback? You comment on that, Mr. Hiles? Yes, thank you, through you, Chair. So decks attached to dwellings are permitted to extend three meters into the water setback. Um, stairs are permitted in the setback as well, uh, subject to the condition that the maximum width of those stairs be 1.5 meters. So that is why the applicant is before us today. Um, they are seeking a variance for stairs located within the water setback to be increased from 1.5 meters wide to six, right. roughly six okay. meters wide. Okay, so the actual deck and stairs. The, 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 it's the width of the stairs, uh, 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 like that, 25 feet, pretty big says. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's what's in question. Yeah, okay, just thanks for that clarification. So uh, my opinion is, is you know, I, I do have a problem with 20 foot wide steps. You know, when that, that's not a minor, minor uh, variance in my mind. Any other questions, Walter? McKay, Mr. McKegney? Yeah, is there any chance the applicant would consider a compromise on the width of the stairs? Yep. That we could discuss? Would it be happy with 10 feet? I guess we could. The, the design for the wider steps was to be for the width of the deck to be in better alignment with the lines of the building. I understand why you want it because my wife thinks it's a great idea. But we have to come up with something that's going to be uh, good for everybody. Yeah. And I think that it, it, uh, the best we would probably do is uh, let you extend it to, say, 10 feet. And we'll carry on from there. Can you make that work? I guess we can. I, I guess from the building perspective, we weren't clear on what the difference, if we're allowed to have the deck in the minimum water setback area, what's the difference between a deck versus stairs, I guess, was the confusion. We're not questioning the stairs, it's 25 feet part of it that's the problem, which makes it somewhat overbearing, I would say, but I would have been there. Mr. Walker? I could agree with 10 feet. Okay. Mr. McCagney? Yes, yes, I could agree with 10 feet also. Jeff, Mr. Isles. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, and I just wanted to uh, note that the proper circulation was completed and as of the date of this report, no comments have been received. There is one condition that I, I would like to, uh, to bring up so that the applicant has a, a chance to comment on it. Um, okay. but there's actually four conditions proposed. Uh, the first three are pretty standard, basically that the, the variance applies to the stairway. Um, the shoreline tree preservation applies, sorry, the shoreline tree preservation bylaw applies um, and that construction uh, mitigation methods be uh, um, taken during construction. So uh, installing sediment fencing down site of the construction site. And, but number four was that uh, there is a shipping container on the site, which isn't permitted by the bylaw. Um, it appears that the, the development is under uh, construction. Um, so sometimes those uh, are used or are incidental to construction and are permitted for one year at the time of construction. However, it's been more than one year since that permit's been issued. So there is a, a condition recommended that that shipping container be removed. And construction is still ongoing. We are not, we have not closed out. We don't have occupancy. And I, I appreciate that. And I'm just making this, uh, making the committee aware of this. Uh, the bylaw does allow a uh, tool shed shipping container and sales construction to be on site for one year from the date of the, uh, that the permit was issued. Um, it has now been more than one year uh, since, that, since that permit was issued. So I'm just, that's why that condition is being recommended because it doesn't comply with the bylaw. Any other comments? No, yes, we're, we're aware of that. We're building is still ongoing. Yep. Okay. So are we in agreement that we'll, we'll allow our 10 feet, 10 foot wide stairs? Is that okay? Oh, I'm, I'm not going to vote in favor of that, Mr. Chair, but it's been, uh, I think it's 
We'll up to Mr. McKechnie and Mr. Walker. Okay. Mr. Walker. Um, I'll make a motion that we allow a 10 foot wide stairs if they can make that work. Um, as far as the condition on the shipping container, I don't think that's our call. That has something to do with the building permit. So uh, I think that can be dealt with through them. Okay, is there a seconder? I'll second that. McCagney. D resolve the committee's decision with respect to file D13 MV 2022 12 be recorded as follows Increase provision of section 3.1 to permit a stairway within the minimum water setback to be 10 feet as opposed to the permitted uh, four point uh, permitted maximum of 4.92 feet. Okay. Please indicate your support. Um, two to one, okay. We'll go, we'll go with that. So you're okay, um, Mrs. Rose, for 10 foot wide uh, steps in your, in your um, deck, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. That being the last case we're going to deal with, um, I need a mover and a seconder to adjourn at 12.15. Hmm? Wait a minute, he's pissed off. Moved by Walter McKechnie. Seconded by Gerald. Thank you very much for your attendance. Um, have a great day. Thank Cut you. Loose. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank okay. you. Thank you.